Hi, this is Alex Moore on behalf of That Nerd Show, and we're here at the Oak Cliff Film Festival of 2016. And joining us right now, Hutch and Kelly. And we're talking about the short film 1985. And we actually had a chance to talk with you, uh, you know, sort of a, a bigger, larger scale a couple years back at the DIFF. Actually, I guess it was last year at the DIFF. But uh, this year, we're talking about a totally different film. And it looks like it's, in some ways, it, it, it looks like it's a little bit, something a little bit different from the previous films, just from the description of what I was reading about it. But uh, the first thing I wanted to ask about this is, what was the inspiration for the title, 1985? Well, it's set in 1985, okay. which makes it the easiest thing. Yes. <laughs> um, it uh, essentially it's dealing with uh, a man that is uh, dying of AIDS that uh, has to pretty much like go home to uh, essentially live with his mother for as many days and his build up to go there. And it's also the significance of the title is, is it was the first year that Ronald Reagan said the word AIDS like a national. Right, yeah, it was a huge, huge uh, turning point uh, socially, I think, uh, back then, so it's kind of an interesting uh, connection there between the two, for sure. Now, this is about a man who seeks a beauty, cons beauty consultant to hide his symptoms, if I understand correctly. What was the inspiration? Is there a specific story that you all know from your own life that led to this uh, idea in the story? No, I think you were <laughs> You've done it already. So. Uh, well, the story is, it's based on a true story. Okay. Our um, director, again, 15 years ago, uh, worked for a viable insurance company, uh, where um, during that time, men with, who, who had been diagnosed with HIV would call in and cash in their insurance policy, pennies on the dollar, to have money to live and enjoy the rest of their, what they deem to be a short life. And this was one of those stories, uh, based on those stories. A man uh, went to a mall to get made up um, to cover up his lesions to go home to his family so his family wouldn't be scared the first time that they saw him. Um, so this story me, but sat with Yen for the last 15 years. And um, as artists do, he, yeah. he is going through yeah. One of those moments where you question what you're doing and um, what you want to do with the rest of your life, and that this story popped in his head, and he shared it with us, and um, we jumped on board immediately. We felt like it was the right thing to do. You mentioned this is different than the film that we had last year. Um, the funny thing is that is actually different from anything else Yen has ever done. <laughs> this is definitely more. We, what we would say in style and tone. Um, that was a fun experiment. Um, last year it was more of we just kind of wanted to exercise those muscles and play with comedy. And, um, and Yen's a really funny guy, but his movies are very melancholy but hopeful, is what I call them. So this is definitely more, tr more true to his style um, For sure. and something that we knew we would be a part of. I find that actually a lot of times people are kind of the opposite of what they tend to specialize in. So right. people who play bad guys in the movies are really good people in real life and vice versa. So that actually kind of makes sense from that point of view. Okay, so... Um, was this kind of an emotional experience? I mean, because it sounds like this was somewhat of a personal story and, it, you know, there was obviously a lot of passion that went into... Making making this thing and um, well, so I mean, it's it, it, it's hard because I mean the script like you know I, I cried the first time I read the script and it's very touching and um, and like I said it's very humanistic which is something that I feel is lacking in a lot of cinema right now and like I joke it's like a lot of film is like really shitty people doing shitty things for other really shitty people <laughs> and so it's refreshing to deal with something that is like something that I'm closer to, which is like, you want to have, you know, sympathy and empathy for people, and you want to treat everybody with love and respect, and so it's just, it's nice just to like, be able to work on a project like that, and the fact that we brought our whole crew together, it was a really low budget film that, you know, we're only able to do because of the Oak Cliff Film Festival grant, we got a grant from them, we were able to shoot on film, but this is all like, our close-knit friends and community that were all kind of donating their time to work on a project that we all felt was very important. And so yeah, it was very emotional because it's like, you know, they, they could be doing other things, but they want to help out, you know, and create something that means something more.
for themselves. So sort of creating homage for, for a real life person, but then the more people that are involved, the more personal it becomes and the bigger the story gets and it starts to get people's attention. So it's always a good thing there. So how did you go about deciding you know, where you were going to shoot certain things? Do you have some, some go-to places in the area that you had in mind when the story came about or what? Well, uh, we, since we're based here in Dallas, yeah. Dallas was uh, easy. That's where our crew is. Um, so it was easy just to bring him up to Dallas. Um, as far as locations, uh, we actually used the home of one of the Texas theater employees because nice. she's amazing <laughs> and uh, she works with us on everything we do. Um, they're just looking for an 80s style house okay. that is period specific. We looked at a few, actually we looked at a couple of other people that work here as well. But yes. it was, like, they looked a little too modern, and so it was very important to us that it look as accurate as possible. So, um, and there was a certain feel that we wanted the home to have, and that yeah. matched it perfectly. Yeah. And, then, and the only other location that we had was a dog food store. And, <laughs> and the airport. Okay. The airport. <laughs> Um, it sounds like there's a story behind that. Yeah, it's uh, We just, you know, as... Um, you can't shoot in... It's hard to shoot in an airport. Yes. Yeah, no money. Yes. As so. low slash low, no budget uh, producers, you get creative with your location. So I was like, I was like okay, what can, we just needed a terminal. It's just one shot. It's out of focus. We it went through so focus. many we, different options. And then I was like, wait a minute. In downtown Dallas, there's a bunch of buildings that have, like, air bridges that mm. go from garages to the buildings and I go there's got to be one that out of focus looks like a terminal. So we spent days and so we spent days, days all right. and we found one. Okay. All of the different and we ones. stole the shot and it was funny because we when we did it it was during lunchtime and there were even security guards walking by we never got stopped or anything. We were like literally and just. you see the scene everyone's out of focus so while we did have period specific extras it didn't matter. There were so. Th but we peppered in actually it's funny we peppered in all of our crew that wasn't you know, yeah. I was shooting <laughs> and then everyone, everybody, and then Yen, Yen, the director, was behind watching the monitor and my AC and everybody else. Like Kelly had a side ponytail and wearing like a really atrocious '80s outfit, and, <laughs> and it's just like you, and we just had. Did to it have the shoulder here. pads? That's oh, all. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh yes. Oh yes. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have shoulder pads, you're not in the '80s. But yeah, that was that was fun. It's it, it's. I like the challenge of having to get creative. He's low budget. Yes. That's and part of the artistry, you know. Right. So the high budget, there's, maybe it's not as creative. So there you go. And so far, we've not had any, a single person go. That looked like a parking garage. <laughs> so, right. So I feel like they, the people felt like it was, you know, pretty accurate. Outstanding. Right. All right. Because we are that nerd show, we have one question that we ask everybody before as, as uh, part of the deal this year with Star Wars and Star Trek being in vogue. If you could be involved in a Star Wars or Star Trek movie, which would it be and why? I grew okay. up watching Star Trek with my dad. There's just a special place in my heart for Star Trek. I would have to agree, Star, Star Trek. I but I love Star Wars. I went yeah. for my birthday this year. I love it, but yeah. nothing no, a little great I, Star Trek. I, I, yeah, I grew up watching uh, Next Generation. Yeah. All right. That's what I watched, so yeah, special place.